You're watching OTT TV Scripture Reality. Tell me about it, right? They said, Well, look, 
we're going to reconstitute it. We're going to put it in normal saline and keep it at body temperature for 72 hours with um, gentle swirling. All right, that's their business. That's great. I said, now I want to be there when you check it out. They said, fine. So I was back. They checked it out. I said, now, uh, they said it's human blood. We can tell that. They did whatever tests they need to do. And then I said, take some of the white blood cells and put them in a the growth medium and keep them at body temperature for 48 hours. And they said, well, that'll do no good because it's dead blood. I said, would you please do that for me? And they said, okay, we'll do it. So anyway, I said, I want to be there when you take it out and examine it. So I was back there. They took it out, examined it under the microscope. And the one technician called the other one over there. And then they called the boss over there. And they were talking Hebrew a mile a minute there for a little bit. And they looked at me and they said, Mr. Wyatt, this human blood only has 24 chromosomes in it. Everybody else has 46. You see, 23 from your mother, 23 from your father, 22 autosomes from your mother, 22 autosomes from your father. You get an X from your mother, you may get an X or a Y from your father. All right? This blood had 23 chromosomes from the mother's side, one Y chromosome only. You see, the kind of child could not have developed if they hadn't had the autosomes from the mother. So all of his physical characteristics were determined by his mother's side of the family, her autosomes. His maleness was determined by this one Y that came from the source, not a human male. Then they said, this blood is alive. And then they said, whose blood is this? I said, it's the blood of your Messiah. And I assure you, those men's lives have changed. In early 2018, researchers in Rome unveiled the 3D carbon copy of what Jesus looked like, based on measurements of the Shroud of Turin. The Shroud of Turin is a 14-foot linen cloth that is believed to have wrapped the body of Jesus Christ after his crucifixion. The statue is a three-dimensional representation in actual size of the Man of the Shroud, created following the precise measurements taken from the cloth. Giulio Fanti, a professor of mechanical and thermal measurements and a scholar of the Shroud of Turin, used his own measurements of the impression on the shroud to create the carbon copy. Professor Fanti has studied the shroud for the last 20 years and led the research team that created the 3D model of Jesus. Based off the model, they are able to tell he was nearly 5 feet 11 inches tall whereas the average height at the time was around 5 feet 5 inches tall. Researchers believe that they finally have the precise image of what Jesus looked like. And based on the marks on the Shroud of Turin, Jesus received a total of at least 600 blows. The sculpture of his tortured body reflects these wounds. Professor Fanti said, I counted 370 wounds without taking into account the wounds on his sides, which the shroud does not show because it only enveloped the back and the front of the body. We can therefore hypothesize a total of at least 600 blows. Professor Fanti goes on to say, We have studied for years the image left by the body on the sheet, using the most sophisticated 3D technologies, and the statue is the final result. The University of Padau and Padau Hospital worked in collaboration with sculptor Sergio Rodella to create the life-size image. Now I read about 20 different articles on this topic, hoping to read about how they made the actual 3D copy itself. What technique or machine did they use? 
Did they sculpt it by hand or did they use some kind of 3D printer? But not one article or video covers that information. However, I found another video from July 2017 of a 3D statue made out of bronze, and the statue itself is from what I can tell from the video identical to the 3D carbon copy statue, as his pose and marks on the body look the same. They explain the process in making the statue in the about section on that video, and this is what they said. The shroud is encoded with 3D information that is found from the spaces between the highest and lowest points of the body and its distance from the cloth. Recently, a VP8 analyzer that gives topographical information about the Moon and Mars terrain was used on the cloth. A 3D holographic image was formed of the face and body. An artist then used the exact dimensions of the 3D shroud image to create a bronze replica of the physical form of Jesus Christ. 2,000 years ago, the Gospels tell us the Roman Empire crucified Jesus of Nazareth. His battered body was then wrapped in a simple burial shroud. For centuries, many believed this 14-foot piece of linen was that cloth. A piece of fabric that is demonstrably hand-woven containing a surface anomaly in the shape and form of a crucified man. The evidence of a scourged man who was crucified and who died of postural asphyxia and cardiopulmonary failure is clear-cut. You can visually see these serum stains around the blood stains that were never visible until our team photographed the shroud with UV fluorescence photography approximately 2,000 years after this man ostensibly was was killed. Dr. Alan Wang has studied that and found that the blood type is type AB. They believed that they had proved the carbon dating wrong because the section from where the samples were taken had been tainted with 16th century cotton fibers. I can't believe it. He says they were right. The uh, leptin or the uh, widow's mite struck by Pontius Pilate uh, in uh, the years uh, in 2980 to 33 we can identify the, the images of them, and so we can identify the particular coin. They found that there were traces of this particular very rare limestone on the shroud, which is only found in ancient tombs in Jerusalem and nowhere else known on planet Earth. It's actually called Tragatine Aragonite, and that's Dr. Avinoam Danin, a botany professor at the Hebrew University in Jerusalem. He found Zygophyllum dumosum, the spores of that plant, and he found Guandelia 2040, spores and pollen of plants found only in Jerusalem. Three-dimensional relief, the front and the back of a whole human being, only one in the world, no other. The shroud image is made from tiny fibers that are one-tenth the size of human hair. To do this, you would need an incredibly accurate atomic laser. This technology does not exist. Well, we estimated that it would be about two to three hundred megabytes, but it proved to be that most of the negatives had information up to one gigabyte. It's important to realize that no other two-dimensional image in existence has been shown to contain three-dimensional holographic information. The hologram does a remarkable job of uh, in emphasizing the certain features uh, on the shroud. We can clearly see there is no distortion of the dorsal or backside image. The fact supports Isabel Pitzik's theory of a true event horizon. Had the body been lying on rock when the image was formed, distortion would have been unavoidable. And Dame Isabel Pitzik, a particle physicist, believes the shroud has brought science to the threshold of a whole new understanding of physics. The muscles of the body are absolutely not crushed against the, the stone of the tomb. It means that the body is hovering between the two sides of the shroud. Now, we're actually getting on to how did that image get there? We, we now know how the image got there because of the work of Dr. August Assetter, that he noticed that the hands appeared to be like x-rays. So he thought that the whole of the shroud image was caused by radiation. 
he injected himself with radioactive material, uh, stood in front of an x-ray plate, and then put the plate in front of the VPA image analyzing computer, and for the first time in history, produced a three-dimensional image from a two-dimensional x-ray. The image on the shroud has been scientifically proved to be caused by radiation. There is no paint on the shroud, whatever. It is caused by radiation, nuclear radiation. Jesus took Peter, James and John, his brother, led them up on a high mountain by themselves, and he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as light. Uh, this is described in uh, Matthew 17, verses 1 to 3. In, in 1 John 1 verse 5, it says, God is light and in him is no darkness at all. Psalm 104, first two verses, it says that God is clothed in light. This is Moses going up Mount Sinai to receive the Ten Commandments from God. His face glowed with light. Now, it lasted a few days and then it wore off. So when you come into contact with God... Your, your face shines with light. And here I'm, making a, I'm taking a leap of faith here and saying that the Shroud of Turin was in contact with the resurrected Jesus Christ and glowed with light, which may be how the Shroud, the image, actually got onto the Shroud in the first place.
everybody does it like OTT TV. <laughs>